Last week, we ended with Rebecca asking Leah to validate more of Aaron's weirdness. So strap in for this week's episode with the girls and Leah Wellborn, the Mystic Autistic, part two. Hey, it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? Oh, uh, life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, at some point I thought, I, I just, one thing that I, I think, uh, because you, you, you seem to see mysticism and autism as being diametrically opposed. And to me, I, I really don't. Yeah, uh, and it, I and need to know more about that. Is, a matter of perspective to me uh let me just say one of my big interests i love history i'm a history thing but what i have found that i love even more than history is prehistory uh for 99 percent of the time that humans have been human we were hunter gatherer foraging we yep. only started doing this civilization thing about one percent of our human time span ago before that mm -hmm. we lived for about a million years happily as far as we can tell foraging living in bands of about 100 150 people uh moving around be living fairly happily i see civilization as a something ugly that got into the species i think that before civilization all animals all humans could relate to one another in a good way we could know what each other were thinking we had this wonderful copacetic way of living something got into humans that made us think we're the end-all be-all and separated ourselves out away from nature i f i believe that before that separation took place when we were in the proverbial garden of eden the people who were autistic were the natural shaman we were the people who were the the spiritual leaders the of the group of people sense. there would be people there were people who would be emerge who would be the super hunter that person would be the tribe super hunter. The mm -hmm. autistic person would be the shaman. There would be someone mm -hmm. who would be the great cook, the great raiser of children, whoever. That is my deep belief. So we all through time have been recognized as this set apart, thinks a little bit different, has a connection to the other side that the rest of us don't. Uh, but then when civilization started to take place, this was no longer something people thought they needed. Now, we autistic people were off to the side in our own little weird world and nobody knew what to do with us. That's been a pretty recent uh, mm. 10,000 years is not that long of a span in the span of human lifetime. That is so true. I believe that we are the spiritual, the natural spiritual leaders of the earth, but that we don't understand that because as humanity, we have been so mixed up and so removed from our natural way of being that this natural state of connection also left handed, my friend, Aaron. Me there, too. I'm left handed. Leah, me yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I'm not. So um, <laughs> I, I feel like that is our role and we have been disconnected. Left handed because, and big boobs? I mean, big I know, boob. put right? it on the list. Put it on yeah. the list. <laughs> Put it so on we're, we're soul sisters. So and I we think are. That that's one reason that, um, you know, we as autistic people feel so lost and people don't know what to do with this is because we have been yanked away from our natural role as, as spiritual leaders of helping people get in touch with their own spirituality, not something outside of themselves, but deep within ourselves that other people maybe just don't have that quick access to that we do. And we've been taken away from our role, mm -hmm. just like that is animals beautiful. have been taken out mm -hmm. of their natural role. Everything is all topsy turvy now because of civilization and patriarchy, and so we have been taken away from our roles. To me, our natural I role. Help, what have I been I saying this whole time? I want to help what? people 
feel lost like I did get back into seeing themselves as natural leaders of the spiritual realm here on that's what i kind of meant in our other podcast when we talked about roles right i feel really great embodying certain roles you feel really great embodying certain roles i think that's really important you don't need to be all things you shouldn't be all things but when your role has been upturned Mm-hmm. And you've been told, we no longer need you because we have this replacement for you that is better than you. And just so we're clear, it's not better than the fucking shaman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we, no yeah. we, we know. Okay. Yep. And so all these the civilization comes in and the civilization is like, oh, I got this. I got this. And then the shaman are over here like, oh my God, you're so misguided. You're I so don't wrong know that. what to tell you. I know. You are so misguided. You are so... Um, leading people down the wrong path. We have the wrong leaders driving yes. these trains, right? Yes. And here we are as these shaman who have been outcast, mm-hmm. who have basically yep. been told, we don't need you. We got this, mm-hmm. right? And we're like, you don't. You don't, right. though. You don't. You don't Mayday. know. This Mayday. is actually really uncomfortable right now because yes. you don't got this. And I, I, can, I feel yes. that way often, mm-hmm. Leah, that I'm like, I see this whole picture. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I have a company based in this, Leah. I run a company that basically tells people your resource directories suck. Mm-hmm. What you are doing to try and get people connected to resources is incorrect. It's not user focused. My whole company is based on we have another way that we can help your people get connected to the support they need in a way that makes sense to them. Mm -hmm. Because as a quote unquote shaman, right? As someone who understands the way, so much of my experience has been about understanding the experience of others. Ding, 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 ding. Right? I, I, I've i been a teacher. I've mm-hmm. been a professor. I have in all of these roles. You're basically Jesus. I've, <laughs> we've already, we've already discussed, you are the Capricorn. <laughs> You have a savior complex. You know all things right. Yep. You do no wrong. Yep. I'm very opinionated. Yep. But yet open yep. to hearing other what's, points what's of view. The, as a good shaman would right. be. What's the shaman the female, knows the way. She what's, sees the light. What's the female version's name of Jesus? Jesse. <laughs> Mary Magdalene. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> right? I'm not kidding. Am I one of your followers? I'm not kidding. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You're the first one right up. You got this thing of Kool Aid sitting right there next yeah, to me. You got to serpent in all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. The first, yeah, absolutely. You are the first one drinking the Kool Aid. You're like, come on in. 100%. Guys. 100%. Come on in. She got something cool to say, right? And there's me and Laura on the freaking stage. Not Laura, Leah. Leah. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen at least once, yep. Leah, because her autocorrect before my autocorrect <laughs> when I was talking to Rebecca today autocorrected your name to Laura. Mm-hmm. And then well, she's like, no. why do you keep talking about Laura? And mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, it's Leah. I knew it was going to happen yeah. at least once today. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, oh, my God. It's yeah. amazing. So you were saying that you don't see the the mythical and the autism as separate and now you've just bridged that for me in a really beautiful way agreed but can you talk more about this mythical side and what that has meant for you in this like second chapter of your life what has it done what has it opened up for you sure i've always been a searcher i've always been a spiritual person and i didn't know where to put my spirituality a lot of the time Because I was raised in rural Texas, my parents were not necessarily practicing Christians, but we were just Christian. You know, that's what we were. Uh, I wanted to go to church. Yeah. Mm, My parents were Democrats, but but Christian. Okay, in rural Texas. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I wanted to go to church with the other children. I would go to church. I would feel what I came to say that Jesus feeling. That Mm. feeling where you get where you're like, oh, spirits here, spirits here, spirits here. And I didn't Mm. know anything else but Christianity. There was no Internet. I was nine. You know, that was what it was. You loved God. You loved Jesus. That was the way it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So I continued down that path. And then as I got older, started reading a little bit and like, oh, Hinduism, Buddhism. That's kind of interesting. Uh, But that was like library. That's things you read about in the library. That was not you know my life Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I was 15, a friend of mine died in a drunk driving accident. His name was Paul. He was a mm-hmm. wild child. But how wild a child can you be at 16 in a rural Texas town in the 80s, right? So yeah. um, he was a drinker and, you know, a bad boy. And a lot of my Christian friends made a point of telling me, sorry, your friend's in hell now. Which to me was like, I don't want any part of whatever Mm. that is. So I was like, Jesus, you're cool, but your church can go jump off a cliff. So I've never lost my love for Jesus, but I've certainly not identified as a Christian since that point when I was 15 years old. Mm. I um, became a Hare Krishna for a while, was very, very deep into Hare Krishnaism when I was in my late teens, which is basically Hinduism. Uh, but found then that that the men wanted to marry me because I was such a chaste young woman. And it's like, no, I just want to be with God. Y'all just, no, oh, just let me be with God. So mm. I came to find that there was no organized religion that was a good container for me. And the older I get, the more I realize it's because it is a thing that's inside. It's not mm. an outside imposed thing that's not real to me that's Mm -hmm. just like government uh so i i love god i love spirit i everything is energy everything is god i'm god you're god we're god trying out different roles playing different roles here on the planet what would it be like to be an autistic woman well let's try it out god so you know here we all are playing this role doing this thing and to me the energy of love and the energy of source is what the goal is it's to get there and to live mm-hmm. in that light to get that jesus feeling whatever that is for you i mean i can get it here just having a deep lovely talk here with you women i'm getting that feeling you know it mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to go and sit in church and obey these rules and these people are bad and these people are good and i can eat this but i can't eat that and if they eat that then they're not good no, that's silly. That is silly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen to this, you know, old school shaman in me speaking to you and telling you what you need is inside you. Mm. And you get mm. really quiet. Yeah, I wear a key all the time. You'll never see me without my skeleton key. And Do I have a skeleton key? That- Do I have a skeleton key? I can't. I swear to God, Leah. You do? I, just, I gotta stop. I gotta blow my nose. I, wear I can't. It. I wear it every single day because this reminds me whenever I'm looking, whenever I'm trying to outsource my happiness to something else that is not within me, I think, no, it's within me. When I get that feeling like, oh my God, I simply cannot live another day unless I have that pair of shoes. I think I'm going to die. I'm going to explode if I don't have those Betsy Johnson shoes. I think, mm, Really? Really? Because for so long in my life, I would go just chasing that next thing, chasing that next thing, chasing it. And then, oh, the letdown because I couldn't find it. But when I finally figured out that it's in me, it really, truly is in me. And I can dwell in me with Jesus and with Buddha and with all of the ascended masters. And we're grooving together and we're having a wonderful time and we can see what's beautiful in the world and we can give that out i mean that that's it that's have i just internally it. cleared my entire calendar for the rest of the day <laughs> because we are gonna have to dissect this session for hours yay what? i know I... what what hey, and i what guess he's reiki too so if you anybody you or any of your listeners want to book a distance reiki session with me it works. She's, I do a lot right, of this. I got her Reiki. calendar. I'm, I'm booking her right now with you. Cool. Uh, what Good. is happening Good, I love it. right now? I'm, t- I'm telling you, this is all the value. <laughs> what is it? I already know all I this I need to stuff. talk about this for a second. How is many times have I said to you? autistic that she that you can, that you can hear my it? language? Because she's saying the things that you've said. But I for hear, years. But I'm hearing it from her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is that it? Because you have dubbed me as the crazy person and she just don't know. Correct. She don't know. However, you are the crazy person, but I do have to give you some credit. You're 
you really have it together. I know. Quite often. I know. You 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 aren't who you play on television. I know. Okay. I know. And that's why I love you I because know. you you come out with these things sometimes that I'm like that was effing brilliant. I know. I know. That no one would know that. No right. one would know because you don't give me. You don't give me those. Because yeah, they right. don't see right. underneath right. the surface, right. right? But you also don't want to think that I know you, and that what? I that no, I, I might have a one up. No, yeah. Oh, no. I'm the shaman here. I know. I'm I know. the shaman I know. here. You are the you're you I'm the follower. The children. No. <laughs> I'm the shaman. Okay? So, How many times have I said to you in over the course of our relationship of 20 years? I'm like, we're all done speaking to these 10 people. You're going national. I know. You're going national. I know. You are the shaman. I've said that I so know. many times times and I know deep down you believe it but because there's not a clear path to get there you can't check those damn boxes I know <laughs> if there's no clear path Leah and I need the path I need right. the stones set out right. so I know what I'm supposed to do right right mostly you need someone else to to do that path and then you're gonna fix it as you're going yes down I know I know I know and here's the problem I you, here's the, the problem you, I can't you also that know that you. the key is within you so she, don't she, she hasn't source, bought into that yet that yeah, but you're, you, 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 you will. You do. You, you do. It's you gonna buy it. Think there. Think about six more get there. years. <laughs> six more years of this podcast, and Leah, we might get there. Leah, how do I? How do I get there? Because I will tell you intellectually that I know that it's there. I, I know that what I'm working with here is something unique, and um, it's me. <laughs> and, and helpful and beneficial and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But I'm not clear that I believe that at my core. And you want to know when it comes up for me? When I have to go make an Instagram video. When I have um, to. No. So I've had two Instagram videos recently. I think I've made a total of 10 videos. Two of them have gone viral. So oh. there's something there, mm -hmm. right? Something that I am saying is resonating with someone. With the peeps. Right? With the peeps. With the people who are willing to listen. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. And then the, the idiots who give a shit about your nose ring. my nose ring, whatever. They, We've, we, yeah. still, we, we still we don't care. We, we still care. Care. I got a nose ring. I don't know if you see, I got a little nose ring too. Oh yeah, see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what happens yeah. for me when I get in front of this camera is my very first thought is, why do you think that you have anything of importance to say to to anyone who's going to give a shit about what you have to say. And then this other part of me comes in that is like, nope, you have a proven history of individually being able to connect with people, many, 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 many people, and to build this bond. And I'm like, well, okay, then the other side comes in. And I'm like, well, that's because you're a great individual connector. You're not a great mass connector. So then I get in front of this stupid camera and I've been a lot better about just doing one take and putting it out there, right? And not like perseverating Those over it or ones. being a perfectionist or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I still struggle with this. When you're talking about the key that is that is inside me, I am still, it is trapped for me. It is something I just feel like I don't have the right to be communicating with people at that level what what is that did you experience that um i did but it was before i had my renaissance my rebirth so let me ask you some questions while they're on my mind about it okay first of okay. all how are you physically in your body i used to be physically so disconnected from my body it was absurd how are you in that mm. regard i think i'm pretty well connected would you say so, Tell me, like, do you, what do you, what, how, how do you, what makes you say that? Um, I can usually tell if I wake up in the morning and something feels off to me. If um, I can tell if um, I am having a physical response to something, but it's actually as a result of I have a big presentation that I have to give. Okay. Right. So I'm now doing a better yeah. job of being like, Okay, you're oh, before I just went on this trip to Denver, I remember thinking, hmm, you're being a little snippy to people. You're being a little like nasty. Some of the stuff that you're saying doesn't really come out right, right? So then my husband will say, is everything okay? You're coming across like this. And I'll say, give me a minute. Let me try and figure out what this is. And then I'll say, we were just at a basketball tournament all weekend. I didn't have any time to myself. I now have to hurry up and transition to get ready. I think I'm just really overstimulated. So I have a really good way of being good. able to 
connect what is going on physically in my body with what may be going on emotionally. Now, I do believe that that's because I have 11 years of training to be a mental health therapist, and that does not include the time that I was actually doing therapy with people, right? So I I have been trained in that way for mind-physical connection. It's really interesting because I had a reaction when she asked that question. It's only because of you and I comparing ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So Aaron's energy, like if you were just to be around her. It's very calm. It's very grounded. Mm -hmm. It's very in her feet. I, my energy is all outside of my head and chaotic and very moving. Mm -hmm. So you're a gas. I'm a solid. She sit like, she's always sitting still and very proper where I'm like constantly, you're going to see, and I'm always, I have to move. So do you know what I, Mm -hmm. I don't know if that also helps with her mm-hmm. interpretation, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm constantly you know having to fidget. I, I'm a fidgeter too. I'm definitely mm-hmm. a fidgeter. I'm not a still person. Uh, I used very to be still. so incredibly disconnected from my body. Um, a morning routine was pivotal for me. I mean, a very strict morning routine. Uh-huh. I I get up. Do you and have I, a specific I mean, I got- way you shower? Order of operations. Yeah. She does. Well, I do I do a guided meditation. Are you tapping? Oh. Do y'all tap? Mm-hmm. tap I have. Yeah. I do I not, tap. But... I do a guided meditation. I, t- I do a tap. I do a prayer to the directions for protection. And then I shake. Shake, 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 shake to get everything physically into my body. All just oriented, grounded. Um And I also don't drink coffee. I stopped drinking coffee and it has been so incredibly helpful for Mm. me. My Mm. nervous system. Never going to (laughs) happen. My nervous system was shot. It is naturally not, I don't think, in the best shape. And then I just drove it like I stole it until I was like 48 or 49. That's that's my motto. (laughs) That's awesome. Drive it, drive it yeah. like I drove it like I stole it. Drove it like I stole 100% it. One hundred percent my problem. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I quit coffee. I quit drinking alcohol. Um, yeah, I I had to. It was just too screwy with my nervous system. I she's speaking just to you right now. Up. Just so we're clear, I'm very aware. She doesn't have to speak to me because I'm already grounded in my body. She's speaking to you I'm and about aware. how you need to do the I'm shakes in the morning. Okay. Just want to make sure we're talking. Aware. You're That's now what... currently talking to Rebecca, which is really beautiful. And I really love this part. So, yes. Yeah. That does. require me to follow a routine. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. <laughs> but, man, I, 15 minutes at the first of my day, start of my day, every single day, I sit there. I, I get myself grounded. I never, ever anymore start a day thinking, oh, God damn, it's another day. Whereas e- that was every day, every day. I was like, oh, God, I got to get up and do this shit mm-hmm. again. But now mm-hmm. it's every day. What do I get to do today? This is so mm-hmm. exciting. This is so Shift. cool. That's how I wake and up. Just I know. Trying to do as much as I, I can and then the stay up and do more and do more, you know? And it's yeah. just made such a difference to my life. And another thing that I will tell you that is a very concrete thing that I've done that has made so much difference in my life is dancing every day. Mm-hmm. Not a choreographed dance. I just turn on music that I love and just dance for mm-hmm. even five minutes can completely change everything in your body. And if you think about it, that's how we, um, we shaman, especially back in the day, dancing was such a part of life and it was such a part of expressing ourselves and it wasn't ever about getting good enough to do a show or Mm -hmm. you know wow look at me don't i look fabulous and sexy no it was about just flailing yourself around and being Mm -hmm. natural and being letting yourself your body expressed get that energy out it is the most freeing most wonderful practice that i've added and it's something i encourage everybody to do Hmm. because it can just absolutely kind of like Yoga flow, out. Mm. same my same concept. My wall yoga change, oh, yeah. change everything around because <clears throat> you're, you can't if you're just dancing it out. You just can't be thinking about. I got to go get my oil changed. I got to do this. I got to do that. That is going to be on hold until you're finished dancing. So it's another form of meditation. A lot of us have a lot of a really hard time. I meditate every day, but I never just sit in silence. Hmm. 
that's not for me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm not meditating. It's just not for me to do that. Some mm-hmm. people walk meditating. Some people dance meditating. Whatever it is that's a somatic practice is much easier for me to get into a meditative flow than what I'm just sitting. So mm. that's another tip that I give to people who say, oh, I can't meditate. I can't just sit still. Then don't. Just forget it. Mm-hmm. That's for some mm-hmm. people. It's not for everybody. Don't worry about it. Sense. One size fits <laughs> all is the biggest lie you're ever going to mm-hmm. hear. Oh, 100%. There's nothing in the entire can, world. Can you speak that, that louder fit. to the school systems? Mm, yeah. <laughs> No kidding. So I get that part. No kidding. I get that part. I feel like I feel like um, if one of the keys to knowing yourself is to be grounded in the physical sense of your body, I think I could cross that check mark. You cannot. No. But I I can cross that check mark. Mm-hmm. Did you have? You said you had a couple questions related to that. Were there were there other things related to shadow how do we work. find that key shadow work? Shadow? Mm. She don't like that. She don't like that. She ain't got no shadows. <laughs> well, you got I cast a couple shadows. shadows. No, I cast a couple. She has no other inner child cast trauma. Their shadows on me all the time. The, what I give you My for your shadow birthday work <laughs> was so helpful for me. And I'll tell you one thing that I struggled with so very much, and I think you can begin to understand why. Would after hearing about my childhood was resentment. I was the biggest little resentment bitch you would ever meet. I resented everyone. I resented being born. I resented being born in Texas. I resented being born with hyperhidrosis. I resented my dad for being mean. I resented my mom for not being uh, attentive to the fact that I had uh, autism. I I, I mean, you name it, I resented it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I had a reason to, but... Mm -hmm. Who cares? What the fuck? Mm-hmm. It was holding me mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. to let go of that resentment. And that was my biggest shadow. That was my biggest shadow. Mm-hmm. And I don't look back and say, well, look at you, you horrible person. You were so resentful. What a horrible thing. No, I say, you know what? I see you. Mm-hmm. A lot of things happened that shouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't do the things they should have done. A lot of times the ball was dropped. But here we are. Mm -hmm. And look at what we've got now. We've got all this experience that I can go forward and give people and try to make damn sure that nobody else goes through the things that I went through. And that's what's Mm going to make all of that worth it. And I don't have to have resentment because now I have this gift. Mm -hmm. I had to give up my resentment to have my gift. Mm -hmm. And that was a fair trade. Mm. I keep having this fascinating like picture that comes up in my mind and it's the The early version of you who's depressed and anxious and suicidal and hates the thought of life in the you we see now. And they're so drastically different, right? I really feel like Leah could just be a third person on this show. Mm -hmm. Like she's like the perfect middle ground Mm -hmm. of of how we engage with, with one another. But I'm having a hard time bridging those two people together. Mm. Can you can you say, Aaliyah, if there was just one thing, if you had to pick one really huge thing that got you from where you were to where you are now, what what's what is it? Grace. Grace. I just um you know the talk about that Jesus feeling. I feel it right now because grace you know, it, it, it's not a Christian thing. It's not and Muslim thing, it's not a Hindu thing. It's 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 just it's grace. It's mm-hmm. beauty and it's love and it's something that you can spend your entire life close to and not even believing it. But if you just take one second and open yourself to it, it can flood your life and change everything. Mm-hmm. And I know that that sounds like a cliche, and I know that people that oh gee, l- l- yeah, right, lady. But I'm telling you, I was as low as you can possibly be and i just let what if mm-hmm. what if i was wrong mm-hmm. what if there is hope can i just open just enough just to let that possibility in and if you can really truly open yourself without even holding that little you know escape clause in your mind just let it go be a little child you should be a little mm-hmm. child to enter heaven and just think, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong about all of this, about all of the bad things about me, about all the things bad things about life. Maybe I'm exactly 
where I need to be. Maybe grace has arranged all of this. Just let that possibility exist in your heart and in your mind. Just just let it wedge that little door open. And you might be shocked mm. to find what will just come pushing that door wide open. And you just think, oh, how could I have been close to this for so long? Mm. Because that's how where I am now. I just look back and I just want to hug myself and and say it's okay if you can just mm. open just a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And I know it's hard to open because there's so much hurt that can just come in that door when you open it just a little bit, but you just just do it. Just trust mm. enough. Just trust yourself enough to open up just a little bit. Mm. I love that. That's my daughter's middle name. <laughs> Grace. Mm-hmm. And it can change. I, I mean, that. Grace can change everything. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to trust it and you have to not hold back a part of yourself. Like, well, if this grace thing doesn't work, no, you got to jump in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grace is synonymous for me with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grace is my vulnerability, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the being authentically and unabashedly yourself. And allowing yourself the opportunity to know I'm not going to reserve this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. And that's, and I, it's so hard. And what I think is beautiful about your story, Leah, is sometimes we have to get to the absolute bottom mm-hmm. yep. when all of your faculties are gone, right? You are just, you, you can't even hold on to the thought that maybe there'll be a backup plan Mm -hmm. because you're at the bottom, you know, and that from that, it allows you the strength to open to the possibility that I have nothing left to hold on to. I might as well grasp on to grace Mm -hmm. and see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. And in your case, Leah, it seems like it has taken you to this absolutely beautiful accepting um (laughs) really like um authentic place of who you are is good enough is okay Mm -hmm. is is our freaking card amidst mm, right Mm -hmm. who you are is okay and then through the process of being okay you realize better than okay Mm -hmm. and i just think that's so beautiful you now share your gift with other people it sounds like from your bio that you specialize in helping neurodivergent people understand themselves and sort of come into this grace is that correct that's certainly my my hope and i do hope maybe i've been able to do that a little bit for you today my oh, dear new friend hundred percent a hundred percent i i have to tell you um, we'll end today's show with an affirmation card and with you telling people how to get a hold of you. But I just want to say personally, uh, it's in such a beautiful reminder to me that when someone sees you, specifically someone who doesn't have any other reason to see you, right? We've had no no reason to be in contact with each other. There's never been a time we've met before this show. And when someone can come in and mirror back to you who you are, it's the most beautiful gift I think you can give to another human being. Mm-hmm. And it's a reminder to me. I try and do that with all of the people that I engage with every single day. What a beautiful gift that is to give to someone. Because I know we joke, right? Rebecca's over there. She's got her notepad with all the check marks, <laughs> right? But I'm not kidding. When when you would say, oh, yeah, well, we like judgment. Oh, well, we justice. Right, or justice, mm-hmm. right? We also like judgment, well, but... <laughs> When you would say things like that or would like just speak into existence, this thing that was so true for me for so long, I cannot tell you what that does to my inner soul. It's a home. It's yeah. a home base. It's a home keeping. It's like, oh, my gosh, there's someone else in this world who has been through or understands what some of this experience is like and it's not just me right and if and if you can do that for 
any of these people that you are working with, I just believe it is the most beautiful gift you could possibly give to another person. And I feel like it's a gift that you've given me. And I'm very, very thankful that we had you on today's show. Uh, I went into this honestly believing this was going to be a a session for Rebecca (laughs) and that Rebecca was going to get all her mythical stuff. But um, this hit me right in the heart and I cannot thank you enough for the ways in which you have really helped me understand myself a little bit more, why I am the way that I am, and just feel just validated in, in, in this world. It's really beautiful. I cannot thank you enough for that. Well, then I have completed my mission in, in part this morning because that is really truly what I live for and what I am here alive for. It's why mm. I lived past 50 to be able to yeah. do this. Yeah. And so I'm very grateful that you have given me the opportunity to share um, my gift because it is a gift, and I'm looking. My that. ears are crooked, and my glasses are crooked. I'm always <laughs> amused. I'm like, look at you with your crooked glasses, you goofy girl. Yeah, mine are crooked <laughs> every day. It's totally fine. <laughs> so, before we go to the affirmation card to close us out, if people would like to get in contact with you, tell us how they can do that, and also tell us about the podcast that you have. Sure. Um, my website is leowellborn.net. That's where you can find pretty much everything uh i have an extremely active tiktok i usually do four or five videos a day most of them are absurd so i think you might find that fun uh i'm also on youtube a lot i post a lot on youtube i make i've probably made ten thousand goofy videos i i make (laughs) videos constantly yeah um so that's really fun. I love to do that. But I also have, I, I'm a meditation teacher on Insight app. If anybody uses the app Insight Timer, it's a free app. It's my favorite meditation app. And I used it for years before I became a teacher there. So mm-hmm. I, I do have many, many guided meditations there on the Insight app Timer. They're completely free. I am a writer on medium.com. I have two, 278 stories there, mostly about self-improvement and self-enhancement and well-being on medium.com. That is a $5 a month subscription, but I try to post those on my website as they come out free so you can mm. read the stories free there, um, mm. but not the backstories. But anyway, um, and let's see. I've also, I'm recently, I'm an ordained minister now, so I'm very excited oh. about uh, about expanding my services into house blessings, marriage blessings, baby blessings. I can officiate marriages, anything like that. I would love to be part of your spiritual journey in any way that I can do that. And of course, Reiki, I, I love doing distance Reiki. I have a lot of good reviews for distance Reiki. It's fascinating how it works. I have absolutely no understanding of it, but I also have no understanding of how the internet works and it works. I know mm-hmm. I push a button and I see you and you see me. Yep. Same thing when I do distant Reiki. I say the prayers, the person lays down in their own home and we get to work and we're communicating and feeling it back and forth. It's pretty wild, but it works. I'm telling you, uh, you need to do it. Oh yeah, that's an out and about around town for sure. Yeah. Yeah. My podcast is called Empower Your Magical Self. And I have one season out, 13 episodes. I'm, I'm setting up my second season now. It will come up in, come out in September. I interview people who have made a profound difference in my life. They're Aww. mostly women, healers, teachers, writers, musicians, um, people who help me live by a soul lit, which is what I live. I do not do diets. I do not believe in them. And I don't want to die right now. So I live a soul lit. I don't do anything that does not light my soul on fire. I don't eat things that I know don't won't agree with my body and my soul. I don't talk with people, you know, obviously beyond interactions at stores and whatnot. But I don't include people in my life that do not light my soul on fire. I just do not do things that do not light my soul on fire. So that is Mm. my soul lit that I live by. So that's another thing that I like to help people get themselves on a soul lit. There will be no one size fits all for a soul lit. My soul lit will not be yours. But I do believe that we will all be better off if we all develop our own soul lit and, and adhere to it as much as possible. I love that. I think that's I love that. Everything. I love that. It'll love also it be in the description of this video. So what I like to do is make sure that there's links and, you know, information Great. there, how to get in contact with you. Um, 
So uh, we will push our audience to you as much as we possibly can. Again, five star rating from me. Uh, yeah. You come and share, and and I'm yeah. I have a keynote speech I'm ready to give. So yeah, I'm. Oh, I love I'm it. Doing mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Well, use your energy to let me know when I should stop um, these cards so I can pick our final Maybe. affirmation card. Okay. Okay. Stop. I know that for every door that life closes, a new one opens around the corner. Okay. I am optimistic. Stop it. Use your key. Use your key to open that door, right? That's there you go. Right. That's right. This is yeah. your your new life. And we're happy that you have lived past 50. Yes. Because, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You have a lot to offer and a lot of people's lives to to rock in really awesome ways. So thank you, Leah Wellborn, for being with us today. Let's close it out with her theme song. The Mystic, Autistic, The Mystic, Autistic. Yeah, The Mystic, Autistic. Okay, all right. That was really fun. I enjoyed that. (laughs) I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you, too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.